I couldn't sleep. I was in prayer and I very clearly heard the Lord tell me that I needed to go to 10 cities over 10 days. Repent San Francisco for your sin. Jesus Christ is coming back. We must humble ourselves in the sight of God and he will lift us up. Look around you. There is so much suffering and we continue walking through life as though nothing is wrong. How much more should we be preaching in this time than any other? If you look historically, the power of God moved in the greatest ways during times of tragedy, chaos, turmoil, and difficulty. Los Angeles, repent Hollywood. The hand of God is against you. Jesus Christ is coming back and his wrath will be poured out. Come to Jesus now before the time is too late. He is offering his mercy and his forgiveness, yet you have turned your back against the ways of God and you have gone after the ways of Baal. You have laid children on your altars and taken their innocent blood. Therefore, the wrath of God is against you. Three and a half years ago, God spoke to me and told me to go to Washington DC and to deliver a message for him in sackcloth. And I had no idea how to even get sackcloth, what to do. This was three and a half years ago. He said, go and take sackcloth, go to Washington DC and deliver a message for me. I didn't even know what the message was. Didn't know how to get sackcloth, had no idea. But through prayer, God showed me I was gonna go and buy some, some burlap from wherever I could find it, take it somewhere, have them sew it together. And I was talking to my dad during that time. He said, Philip, I think you should make it yourself. I think that's gonna make it more meaningful. And it was like, God spoke to me in that moment and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like I have to make this suit myself. Repent Las Vegas. Jesus Christ is coming back. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be exalted and every mountain and high hill be made low. Let the crooked places be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all eyes will see it together. Do you see what is in front of you, Las Vegas? Do you see the vaults of money run dry? The machines turned off. We're getting a roll of burlap from Home Depot and, and getting a, a, just a sheet, a simple sheet underneath. And it, it's incredibly simple to make, but he showed me every step of the way. I'm not good at create, like creative things, making things. It was incredibly easy. Uh, I used it. Uh, twice to deliver prophetic messages in front of the Capitol building and in front of uh, Planned Parenthood in Houston. And then I preached in it a couple of times in front of the pyramids in Mexico City and then outside of Old City Jerusalem in Israel during that time. Now, back in I think it was 2017, I lost everything. I'd say about 80 to 90% of everything I owned in a flood from Hurricane Harvey. I lost my home, lost my vehicle, about 80, 90% of everything I owned. And I remember distinctly God telling me in that time, leave the sackcloth suit. That season has passed. I'll tell you again when you need to make a new one. And that was the, the, the feeling that I got during that time. And so I left the sackcloth suit that, that he had showed me to make in, the, in my home during that time. And, um, and that was that. Jesus! Before it's too late, repent, Houston, Texas. Cry out to God and He will give you mercy, show you compassion. He'll take your heart in His hands. He'll mold you and make you like the potter molds the clay. He'll give you a new heart of flesh. He'll write His law upon it. He'll give you new life. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how many abortions you've had. If you're out there and you're seeing this video, there is mercy for you. There is forgiveness for you. 
The videos were not about who was listening in the actual place, but about the symbolism and spiritual significance. It wasn't about the actual outreach. It was about delivering a message. This is important for me to convey right now. When we speak out loud, the power of life and death is in the tongue. When you pray out loud, things happen in the spirit realm. You speak life, you speak death, you speak blessings, you speak curses, you speak positive, you speak negative, things happen. And sometimes when you speak in faith, especially in a prophetic way, things happen, switches get turned on, switches get turned off, things begin to move. And if there's one thing that God showed me is going out in places like San Francisco where people are like, you, who are you talking to? There's no one there. Of course, we know that. We're, we could have, one, the cities were completely abandoned. None of the cities had people in them because everybody's on lockdown. It makes sense. But we weren't there to preach to the actual specific people in that location anyway. We were there to deliver a message, to preach against the sin in that ge geographical region, to call the city to repentance for the specific sin that they were living in, and to hit the on switch for some things to begin to move in that region. Whether it was power being released for spiritual warfare to begin against principalities in the region, we know at any given moment angels and demons are at war. We know that at any moment hearts and minds are being stirred up to pray, to repent, to be obedient. So we don't know what the effects are. We go in faith, we walk in faith, we speak in faith, and we believe by faith that God is going to take care of everything else. He's gonna bring the increase. He's gonna stir up movement. Pet New Orleans for your drunkenness and your addiction. Do you feel the tension in the air? We're so afraid of this coronavirus, and yet we're not afraid of the one God who has the power to cast your eternal soul into hell. Our soul is eternal. It's either gonna be with God forever, or it will be in the lake of fire forever. There is no other substitute. The good news is God sent his son Jesus to die for you. He laid down his life on a cross by his stripes you can be healed we are born into this world as enemies of god but through the sacrifice of jesus we can be reconciled to the father and given the promise of eternal life we can have eternal fellowship with god and you cannot earn it the wages of your life is death the wages of your sin is death there are not good none righteous not one but jesus gives us a way where there's no way his blood pays the penalty for your sin and through his blood through his sacrifice even though in my flesh i didn't want to go i was feeling you know uh i had my own things i wanted to be around family i walked in faith and i knew that god was going to do something amazing because this was not something I had in my mind at all. When he spoke 10 cities over 10 days, I was like, oh man. I knew I had to obey. I prayed for a night and some hours, but the next morning I knew I had to go. And I wasn't excited about it. I thought, Lord, this is the hardest thing that you've ever asked me to do. And I've done some difficult things. I've preached in sackcloth before. I've gone to extremely dangerous places in South Africa, in India, in Pakistan, uh, Indonesia. I've been to really dangerous places. And by far, this is the most difficult thing I've ever put my, myself to the task to. It was incredibly hard to do at times. Repent Atlanta! Jesus Christ is coming soon and he is trying to speak to us today. Atlanta, we must humble ourselves in his sight and he will lift us up. He has said in his word, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Atlanta, there is so much hurt in this city. We're carrying wounds, we're carrying burdens that you were not meant to carry. And God wants to take those burdens from you. 
Jesus has said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's telling you that he will take the burdens from your soul. He'll ease the troubles that you carry. We're walking through life thinking that everything is just going to continue the way that it always was. But if there's one thing that we can allow to wake us up, let it be this virus. Why sackcloth? Man, sackcloth is biblical. Sackcloth is a form of humility, of brokenness, of uh, humbleness before God, of mourning, of grief, of mourning for the nation's sins, repenting. The, the Bible talks about sackcloth in, in a lot of different places, in Joel, in, in Jonah, in, in Revelation. Uh, many places it talks about mourning and repenting and sackcloth and dust and ashes. Humility is huge. We're not supposed to be relevant, we're supposed to be obedient. So if there's one thing that I can convey to you today is obey God. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. The hardest part about all of this was God gave me very clear directions and instructions throughout this entire 10 days and I didn't want to break those rules and it was very hard not to respond to a lot of people not to want to defend myself not to want to explain why I was wearing inside he quite literally gave me instructions to every day have a particular format only put out one video there were other videos we wanted to post we wanted to make other videos but we wanted to be obedient to God more than anything he said put out one video a day day one repent San Francisco day two repent Los Angeles we could have come up with a lot better titles in my own mind right in my own flesh I'm like oh man people would click on if we only no very clear instructions day one repent San Francisco day two repent Los Angeles and we followed that theme throughout the entire 10 days he also said don't respond to comments challenging or questioning or explaining don't tell anybody where you're going to go next You see things like the bubonic plague, the Spanish flu, World War I, World War II, the Civil War even in the United States. You see huge revival, spiritual awakening happening in times where millions of people are being killed, millions of lives are being lost, and we see this pandemic that's moving across the world. How much more uh, should we be doing in this? What I'm saying is, this is the perfect time to move in faith, my friends, because hearts and minds are ripe to receive the message. If they're not going to receive it now, then when else will they? Woe unto you, America, for the hour of your judgment has come. The first woe has passed. Behold, the second woe. Your city streets shall be turned to stubble and your skies shall be filled with smoke. Fire will fall from heaven, and then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Repent, United States of America, for the kingdom of God has come near to you. There's a lot more emotion conveyed in it. You have to let your voice be heard. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Uh, you, you, you know, at times you could see how much I was straining uh, to to get my voice out there, but it was it was really really cool too to be used by the Lord and to speak in faith and see the Holy Spirit move and to see the reactions by all of you what a blessed time I think we were most really surprised that there was such a positive reaction to what we were doing over the 10 days as people began to see you know connect the dots of where we were going looking towards the next city wondering where we were gonna go next New 
York City, do you hear the voice of God today pleading with you to humble yourself in his sight so that he might lift you up? If you run to Jesus, he will not deny you. He will take you in as his own and he will wrap you in a robe of righteousness. He will give you a garment of praise against the spirit of heaviness. And he can heal this land, my friends. Disease, viruses, bacteria. You don't have to live in fear. We're so afraid of dying. But your soul is eternal. And one day we will stand before the Almighty God, naked in our sin, and we will account for the words and the deeds of our life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life. You can find life in Jesus Christ, in his hand, the soul of every living thing, the breath of all mankind. The word of God is going forth. Do you hear his voice, New York City? The hammer that breaks the rocks. Let him lift you up. Let him breathe life. Let him bring repentance restoration and forgiveness today is the day of salvation do not turn your ear from the voice of almighty god i will never pretend to act like i don't care how many views we get we want to reach the world we want as many people to watch as possible it would be foolish for us to pretend like we don't care how many people are watching the videos we absolutely want people to see the messages that are being put out we just can't strive towards that we obey the lord let him take care of that but we have to be smart and wise in the process. Repent, Chicago! Jesus Christ is coming back! Do you hear his voice? The devil is a liar and we rebuke Satan and his lies and every lying tongue that rises up against us in the name of Jesus. And we proclaim and declare the kingdom of God for this land, for this nation, for Chicago. Repent Chicago, humble yourself in his sight. The Bible says if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. My friends, you can experience the grace of God. You can be forgiven for everything you have ever done. There's nothing too much, too great or too awful that you've committed that cannot be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. God in his infinite wisdom had a plan for man to save him, to take a people for his own, to call them his people, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, to bring from darkness to light, from death to life. Choose this day, my friends. We've been on the road 10 cities over 10 days. We were doing it in real time. We went to 10 different cities all over the United States in 10 days. As of right now, I'm going to sit at home over the next 14 days and I'm going to rest. I'm gonna seek the Lord. I might make some videos here and there, but don't expect to see a video tomorrow or at least a few days after today. I do need to be alone with God, to talk to my family, and uh, God will be faithful. He speaks to us. Seek the Lord on your own. Ask him to speak to you. The most common way that I hear the voice of God, I would say it's likened to have a, a download of information, okay? I'll ask the Lord for, for an answer. I'll pray and I won't know. I'll pray and I won't know. Over time, I'll pray and I won't know. And then all of a sudden, I automatically know. It's very clear. I know without a, a shadow of a doubt. It's just revelation, understanding, and confidence that he has now spoken to me.